Today I'm going to give you a short demonstration on how to build a small planter using Bradstone, Old Town, Walling Blocks and Copings. Now, before I start, it's important to mention that if you're planning to build any retaining wall over 600mm high or any wall over 900mm, it's important to use an experienced professional like one of our Bradstone Assured installers to make sure the wall is safe and structurally sound. So the first task is to mark out the area where the walls will go so that you can start digging out for the foundations. Foundations, or footings as they're sometimes called, aren't always necessary with a small wall that is less than 600mm high. If you have an existing concrete base or an area of firm and stable paving, you could build straight onto that. But because our planter is going into an area of garden, we'll need to form a simple strip footing using concrete. The size of the footing is determined by the walling blocks. You need to have around 100mm of working room or spread to each side. Because the Old Town blocks are 150mm wide, this means the footing will need to be 350mm or so in width. Our finished wall is only going to be 450mm high, so we don't need a tremendously deep footing. Between 100 and 150mm will be plenty. We also need to start laying the walling blocks a little below ground level, say 50mm, so the footing won't be visible when the wall is finished. So this means we need a trench 200mm deep and 350mm wide. To create the concrete for the footing, we're going to use a 6 to 1 mix, which means 6 parts aggregate, sand and gravel, to 1 part cement. Mix the sand and gravel first with just a little water, ensuring the cement is evenly distributed throughout before adding extra water. You need a fairly wet, pourable concrete so that it flows into the trench footing and is easy to level out. The concrete is simply poured into the trench, spread using a shovel and roughly levelled out before being tamped with a length of timber or a float trowel to expel any air pockets that might have formed. This also creates a rough, rugged finish that will be an ideal base for the mortar to bond to once you start building the wall. Ensure that the concrete is flat, with no slope or fall in any direction. Leave the concrete overnight to give it a chance to harden. Start by dry laying the blocks to give you some indication of where they'll sit on the footing and if you look carefully you'll spot that we need to cut a block to get it to fit along the front edge. Move the blocks out of the way for a moment while you set up a taut string line. For any wall building task, you need a bricklaying mortar. This is made using 3 to 1 mix. That's 3 parts building sand with 1 part cement, with a little plasticizer to make the mix more workable and just enough water to make a smooth and pliable mortar. Remember that wet mortar can burn exposed skin, so make sure you're wearing suitable protective gloves and have long sleeves to protect your arms as well. First, make the bed, which involves placing a line of mortar on the concrete footing and rippling it with the point of the trowel to make sure there's some give when we set the block onto it. Put out enough mortar for the block you're about to lay, with a little bit extra to ensure the end of the block will be fully supported. We will need a mortar joint between the block and the existing brick wall. To achieve this, spread, or as it's known in the trade, butter some mortar onto one end of the block so that when it's pushed up against the wall, a vertical mortar fill joint is created. Now the block is in position, you just need to settle it down to the correct height as indicated by the string line. For this, use the rubber mallet, tapping the block firmly on its top, about one third and then two thirds along its length to take it down to the correct level a bit at a time. Although the string line should be a good guide to level, double check using the long spirit level, making sure the block is flat, both along its length and also across its width.
using the long spirit level to check both the flatness across the top of the blocks and the alignment along the face of the blocks. Where there are gaps of less than a full block's width, we need to cut a block. There are two very different tools that are commonly used for cutting blocks, a hammer and bolster chisel or a power saw. It's best to leave power saws to the professionals, so we recommend a simple hammer and chisel. Whichever tools you use, ensure you've marked the block carefully before you cut. We're ready for the second course now, and this is done in exactly the same way. Notice how we've staggered the blocks on this second course to ensure that the vertical joints don't coincide. The wall is going to be finished with a coping, a flat stone which sits on top of the wall and gives it a neat and tidy finish. However, before you do that, it's a good idea to point the horizontal and vertical joints, smoothing off the mortar that's been squeezed out when tapping down the blocks, as well as filling any gaps. Use a small pointing trowel and a pointing bar to do this. As we did with the blocks when we started this project, we dry lay the coping stones to see how well they fit and whether any will need cutting. There are two key things to check with coping stones. Plan the joints between the coping stones. As with the blocks, you need to avoid having vertical joints coinciding, so they'll need to be offset. Ensure there is an overhang both along the long face and at the short end, and allow a 10mm joint between each coping stone. It's a good idea to cut any pieces you need before you start to lay. In exactly the same way as we did with the walling blocks, these Bradstone Old Town copings are laid on a bed of mortar, with one end buttered up before being offered into position. Once on the mortar bed, we use the rubber mallet to tap it down and then use the long spirit level to check that it's flat along its length, but with just a touch of fall towards the front edge so that any rainwater will run off. All we need to do now is point them, as we did with the walling blocks, making sure all of the joints are properly filled with mortar and smoothed off to a tidy finish. So now it's job done, and I'm sure you'll agree the results are pretty impressive. Hopefully you've learned enough from this short film to be able to do just as good a job yourself. The tools you'll need are a pair of trowels, one specifically for pointing, a string building line, a long spirit level to make sure everything is straight and level, and a rubber mallet to tap down the blocks. Don't forget these three tips for success. Make sure your foundations are level and solid. Always follow the building line and check regularly with a spirit level and never build more than six courses at a time. You may of course want to hand the whole project over to a Bradstone Assured installer like me. I'm sure there's one in your area, so just visit the website to find out more. Goodbye and thanks for watching. Thank you.